So we just finished up our radiator flush and fill and we are good to go, correct? We can sleep better at night knowing that we are good for another 50,000 miles, right? Not necessarily, folks. Our coolant is still susceptible to failing up to the 50,000 mile mark. Why? There are three main factors in your coolant breaking down and I'm gonna list them right now. One is heat, two is air, three is contamination. Heat is one of the major enemies of ethylene glycol, which is a main component in your radiator coolant. People pushing their vehicles with towing and off-roading are more prone to having more heat issues than someone that drives to the shopping mall and back. People living in hotter states are more prone to having more heat issues than someone who lives in states where they still use horse-drawn buggies, such as Pennsylvania. Air is another major enemy of your cooling system, causing the coolant to oxidize, leading to a more acidic solution. But I burped my system until I no longer saw any bubbles. But even so, it's almost impossible to burp out 100% of the air out of your system. Why? Because your cooling system is not a sealed system. Also, all your hoses and gaskets, they still allow microscopic traces of air through the pores of your hoses and seals. And finally, contamination, rust and scale and other debris within your cooling system due to old age and due to lack of maintenance also contribute to your coolant's pH balance shift in the wrong direction. So in essence, the coolant's acidic nature is the result of both inherent chemical degradation and the introduction of external factors. So what do we do? The best thing to do is to equip yourself with all the tools in your preventative maintenance tool belt to see the unforeseen. Let me introduce to you folks a digital pH tester with over four stars from over 2,000 reviews. It is about $20 and can save your engine from major catastrophe. So we're gonna go ahead and put it to the test. Here's the pH tester I purchased, three in one. It also measures uh, parts per million temperature um, and also measures pH, specifically why we got this meter. So let's go ahead and open it. Here you go, brand new in the box. Here you go. What do we have here? We have buffers. These are to calibrate your meter, but it already comes to you already calibrated. Okay, so we are not gonna calibrate it. Let's go ahead and set these aside. If you ever wanna calibrate it, you can go ahead and read the instructions on that. Let's go ahead and find out if this has already been loaded with battery installed. And it doesn't. So let's look for the battery in the box. And here it is, hidden inside the box. Punctured through the rear here. And if you guys have never used these batteries before, let me show you which way is positive, which way is negative. The flat side is positive. The rounded beveled side is negative, okay? Don't ever put these backwards in here. Your meter is going to heat up very, very quickly, okay? So remember, flat side is positive. We're gonna put all of them in one direction in series just like this, okay? And we're gonna put it inside the cap here. When we open up the cap, we are gonna look for the positive sign. It's gonna say positive on either end, and we're gonna face the positive on that side. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see, but the positive is on the top. So we are gonna face all the flat side towards the top, one by one. The last one, we're just gonna squeeze it in there. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead and close up the cap. How do we know 
what we need in our vehicle. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? That's why I brought our 5050 Lexus antifreeze coolant, the one that we put in our vehicle. This is brand new, okay guys? I also put vinegar. Vinegar is gonna be very acidic, so we are gonna find very, very low numbers on our pH meter. I use distilled water in order to clean the probe, okay, so we can continually test on different subjects, okay? So, we're gonna use one side of the pH meter, which is acid, we're gonna use neutral. So guys, so it's been settling at zero for quite some time now, so we're gonna go ahead and test this meter, but what are we gonna test the meter on? Obviously, we want to know if our coolant is at the proper pH balance. Let's go ahead and pour the one all the way on the left, vinegar. We are going to pour the one in the middle, Lexus coolant. We're gonna go ahead and remove our protective cap right there. We're gonna push on. It's gonna be a zero. It's gonna say pH on the top right. We are gonna dip it into the Lexus coolant. Look at that, guys. Look at how alkaline that is. Is that great or not? It's gonna fluctuate. It's going to settle down, okay? So we're looking neutral. Seven, seven and a half to eight. Okay, two alkaline is like nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. But look at how neutral and perfect my Lexus coolant is. Now let's go ahead and pour some distilled water in our cleaning cup right here. We're gonna take our test meter and soak it in the distilled water and rinse it around and let it soak for a little bit. Swirl it around for a minute or two. Then we're gonna take a rag and we are going to gently clean the outside so it doesn't contaminate our next test. And we're gonna gently dab the inside and we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes and let it air dry. We do not want to mess with that piece of glass in there, that glass bubble in there. Very, very fragile. That's what gives us our accurate readings, okay? Along with these electrodes. Okay, let's let it sit for 10 minutes. Okay, guys, it's been sitting for over 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and push power. Let's go ahead and dip it into the vinegar solution. You only want this white portion to go inside the solution. You don't want to go above this gray portion right here. Okay, let's go ahead and dip it in here. Let's see what kind of numbers we're coming up with. And look at the pH balance of vinegar, 1.62. Okay, so we have proven that this thing reads vinegar as very acidic. We know this meter works in both neutral and both acidic fluids, okay? Okay, guys, we're not going to stop right there. I am kind of curious. I'm not even sure if you guys were wondering this too while sitting at home. What about my old antifreeze? the ones that's been in my engine for 30,000 miles. What is the pH balance in this? I'm kind of curious. I know it's not perfect, it's not brand new, but I'm just kind of curious on what the pH balance is. So, we got an empty glass right here. We are going to scoop up some old coolant from my Lexus GX460 and we're gonna do the same test. Let's get a full glass here. There you guys go. Let's go let's go set this on the table. We're going to set it right in front 
of these right here. Look at the color change too. Wow. I'm just kind of curious. Have you guys ever seen carrot color orange coolant? This is our brand new coolant straight out of the bottle. This is my used coolant I just removed from that pail. I'm going to go ahead and test this right now. Let's get our meter right here, a trusty little meter. Let me set this in the light for you guys. Let's go ahead and turn on our meter. It's going to fluctuate. It's going to stagnate at zero. When it's at zero, we're OK to dip it in here. And let's look at my old coolant. Well, can you guys see that? The light's bad, huh? There you go. 4.87. 4.92 so guys we just made some interesting findings with this very interesting test so we know that this pH meter works and also I can know I can sleep better at night putting brand new coolant into my Lexus it being at the pH balance that is perfect I am also glad that I removed my old coolant when I did because the pH balance was way below neutral, guys, where it's supposed to be. Wow, and even look at the color change on this thing. If you guys are kind of curious on what your pH balance is and if it's going to affect your seals, if it's going to affect your valley plate, if it's going to affect your timing chain cover gasket, if you guys really want to tackle preventative maintenance on your Lexus GX460, I beg you guys to test your coolant, test your brake fluid, test a whole bunch of other fluids. There are tools like this out on the market that does all this for you so you, don't, you can take the guesswork out of wondering if you need to do a flush or not. This test right here are for mainly for those of you that do a drain and fill instead of a flush and fill. Flush and fill, I'm taking everything out as much as I could, the majority of it, and putting back 50-50. I know that, okay, because we drain the engine block. A lot of you guys are just doing drain and fills. You, you're just taking out coolant from your radiator. You're putting in brand new 50-50. You're mixing it up with old coolant. And your justification is, if you do it enough times, it's going to dilute so much that everything's going to be brand new. It doesn't work that way, guys. <laughs> if you put in brand new coolant, it doesn't push the old coolant out. All it does is you're putting it into the same tub, mixing it, then flushing it, then you're putting brand new, mixing it into the same tub of the old coolant, which is 4.9 pH, and flushing it out. You don't know how many times you're doing this, and you don't know how many times it's being diluted. You don't know what the pH balance is, but take the guesswork out of your drain and fill by picking up one of these and check it out for yourself. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. I love my GX460, and I am here to help you guys take care of your GX460. Peace. Bam.